user. Nice to meet you. Jump in the chair and make yourself comfortable. So I'm your assistant driller, is that you right? You are my assistant today. Okay. Alan spent 16 years drilling for oil offshore from the North Sea to the Falkland Islands. All right, Alan, so what's, what's the scenario that we're going to simulate here today that hopefully I can help with? Now, we've been drilling and the drill bit's actually worn out. And the drill bit's 6,000 feet away. We need to get the drill bit from where it is back to surface so we can change it, pulling it out sections at a time. It will be my job to disconnect each 120 feet section of pipe as it comes to the surface and store it away safely using a bit of kit called a hydroton, essentially a giant hydraulic wrench. All right, let's get started then. <laughs> and we've got a lot of pipe to bring up. We do, yeah. So I'm going to get the first stand ready for you. Here we go. Yeah, Here yeah, go. OK. You're basically bringing yeah. it up. Well, it starts to happen, doesn't it? Yeah. Whilst I'm concentrating on operating my supersized wrench, Alan's keeping an eye on the pressure in the oil well. A sudden increase in pressure could, if not spotted, be catastrophic. So if something were to go wrong with the pressure in the well, what, what is that worst case scenario? If we didn't recognise what was going on, a blowout, that would be worst case scenario, in which case potentially you could lose the rig. Really? If things got that bad. Yeah, that, 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 that sounds really bad. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. A blowout is an uncontrolled surge of oil or gas from the well and can have disastrous effects on the environment, causing offshore oil spills and risking lives on the rig. On our simulated rig, with Alan keeping across the pressure, it's time for me to take the controls. Now, I want you to take your left joystick yeah. and then push the joystick forward. OK. Keep pushing forward. Ooh. I'm ready to swing the massive hydrotongs into position. So, joystick. Yep. And just keep it held forward and it'll Ooh. stop. So release the joystick. When it's going to spin to rotate out the threads. This is going to break the connection between our top four sections of pipe and all those other sections beneath. That's correct. OK. Oh, so up comes the pipe. Yeah. This big gantry is bringing it away and that's racked up nice and neat in with all the other ones over mm -hmm. there. It's like putting a snooker cue away. <laughs> this is amazing. Out at sea, this process needs to run like clockwork. So how, how long would it typically take out in the field to draw up this 6,000 foot long drill pipe and rack it all away neatly? Perfectly likely that we could pull out the hole at 2,000, 3,000 feet an hour. The efficiency is key to make sure that the, the operations are running as smoothly as possible. Uh, but more importantly than that, make sure they run as safely as possible. What I'm experiencing here is very high-end technology that has come on a long way since the first rigs went out into the North Sea. But even with all that technology on my side, it requires a lot of a focus, a lot of attention, and there's a lot of responsibility that you hold when you're operating the drill and having to be mindful of what's happening thousands of feet away. Ever since the search for North Sea oil began, the industry has depended on people like Alan, who are prepared to leave their families and friends to live offshore for weeks at a time. Almost 50 years ago, the crew of Britain's first rig, the Sea Gem, were the guinea pigs for this unconventional way of life. Kevin Topham was one of them. It was basic. Sometimes it was two men to a bunk. There weren't all that many separate beds because it wasn't big enough. 